welcome to Table Tennis Philosophy. And today we're going to talk about booster and speed glue. Uh, if you don't know anything about this, this will be very educational to you. If you are familiar with booster, it might give you a little bit different perspective, possibly. So here's here are the essentials, what you need to know at this point. First of all, speed glue is not legal to use. Uh, they, it can be tested using, uh, uh, because it has some toxic fumes. Uh, essentially, it's, it's poisonous and uh, was commonly used at one point uh, in table tennis, which really changed the table tennis environment quite a bit with everybody using speed glue. Um, rubber was constantly expanding, contracting, uh, and it was one of those things. The idea was to make the rubber a little softer, um, expand the sponge, which stretched the top sheet, which made, gave it a very unique and uh, great feel when it, when it worked well. So for various reasons, ITTF um, banned speed glue several years ago. What you need, so the response was uh, a lot of table tennis players were not happy about it at all. Uh, manufacturers started coming up with different types of rubber, saying that it was just as good as if it was speed glued, which almost was never the case. So what they came up with was Booster. Here's some here, table tennis booster. That's a popular one right there. And the idea, again, was it's not quite as poisonous as uh, speed glue, harder for uh, it to be detected, and sort of became a don't ask, don't tell situation as far as professionals using it. Uh, some, if, if they overused the booster and expanded the rubber too much, uh, it became pretty obvious and uh, the sound of the rubber would also make it kind of obvious. And it had somewhat the same effect as speed glue, but maybe not quite as much. And uh, people use booster, particularly on hard Chinese rubber. It's used on the sponge and uh, the more layers you put on, the more it expands, the more um, speed and spin you're going to get. And what you'll also notice is it's, it's harder to control and that's a downside of it. Um, you may ask, why, why do I own some booster? Do I boost my table tennis rubber? And the answer is no, not really. I have, I've experimented around with it and uh, so, so little, so rarely, um, definitely not in competition. So it's something that even if it was legal, I'm not sure it would be beneficial to me right now. And uh, if you're looking for a quick fix to your table tennis game, boosters probably not it. It becomes expensive, tricky. Uh, again, it makes your rubber expand, contract. If you'd use too much of it, your rubber is going to have a soft, mushy feeling. That's not going to be good. I said, I've used it enough that I know the, the pros and cons of it. Um, honestly, speed glue seemed to be more predictable um, in a lot of ways than the, the boosters. The boosters are designed to last a week, two weeks, a month, maybe even more than that. But uh, at least with speed glue, if you got the speed glue on there, since it was, you'd have to do it um, daily. In some cases, players would do it hourly in training. Uh, might be glued the rubber more than more than once during the day, and um, you could get immediately the speed glue effect uh, up until a point where you'd expanded and contracted the rubber so many times that it was. Uh, turning into something that was not enjoyable to play with, at which point you would go and buy new rubber and, and uh, glue that up. Um, so yeah, the glue was great, although um, it was not a good thing for table tennis, particularly when you had young kids um, dealing with poisons um, on, their, on their racket and you could, you could inhale too much of it. Like I said, the booster is less 
poisonous. I wouldn't stick my nose in it. Um, but that's, that's kind of what you need to know about um, uh, Speed Glue and Booster. Speed Glue is still sold, which is the only reason I'm uh, talking about it at all. It's illegal in tournaments. If you're just using it recreationally, uh, like I said, it is poisonous, but um, you know, at least you, you aren't you aren't breaking table tennis rules if you play with it in the in your own in your own home. But I would highly advise against using speed glue uh, if you get used to it and don't use it during a tournament. That could backfire on you as well. The booster is a little more of a gray area as far as the legality of it. Some people will tell you it's perfectly legal and can't imagine that table tennis would be used without it. Uh, uh, you could play without it. The idea is that the rules state you can't alter the top sheet. This um, By boosting, you're altering the sponge, which um, is going to expand the sponge, which does affect the top sheet. So uh, table tennis purists will tell you that, uh, or the people that take the rule extremely literally will say that even putting booster on the sponge that did affect the top sheet, it affected the racket covering and that's clearly against the rules. Uh, so again, I think if it was, uh, if ITTF and USATT were serious about it, they would uh, crack down on it more and uh, because at major tournaments, you're probably seeing boosted rackets by the top players uh, quite a bit. Not, not everybody, for sure, but quite a bit. So, that tells you what you need. Uh, sorry for the uh, <laughs> ominous uh, howling at the start of this, but I thought we were getting into a sort of a dark area here when you're talking about speed glue and uh, boosting your rubber. So, all right. If you've got any questions about that, that, was, uh, that question came... Um, from Bruce again. That's his, that's the second question I've answered for Bruce. Maybe the third. So I, I got him. I know I got a couple other people that are asking questions about some stuff. I'm going to have to do a little more research about. But see you next time, and uh, have a have a great day. Bye.